Base jumping is interesting because it does take a lot to get to the point of even being comfortable enough to take that step. You're in it and you better be sure that you want to be there because you can't go back. Right before I jump, I kind of put all that away and just get totally focused on the fact that I'm about to go and then everything almost goes blank. At this point, it starts to feel like if you didn't start climbing when you were four, then you know, forget about it. But it's funny because um, I didn't grow up athletic. I didn't grow up doing any outdoor sports. I started climbing when I was 18. So I grew up in very academic, suburban upbringing in Illinois, New Jersey, and Maryland. And I played piano and was super focused on music. And that was it. And so the first day I went climbing was my freshman year of college and like I literally had no idea what rock climbing was and that is why I went. I did stay in school, I got a master's degree in literature, I went to law school for a week, <laughs> famously. But um, you know at that point in time I said hey this is really what I want to do and commit to it completely. And I think a big part of climbing and also base jumping is always kind of this deep doubt of like, do I even belong here in this scary place? And so I think the more times you confront that and build up to things and take those next steps, then it really builds confidence where you say, yeah, I can do this. You ready? In a way, as a climber, it didn't make a lot of sense to start jumping when I did, but I did see this thing that they had very much in common and that's fear. And really it's the fear of falling. And so I guess in my brain, if I was struggling with the fear of falling as a climber, well, let's just go fall. <laughs> so that's kind of what pushed me into it, literally, was just trying to really confront that fear that you have as a climber. Every time I stand at the edge, I, to, it's a very real moment. Um, you can't not feel that way when you're standing at the edge of a cliff looking off and I'm fully aware of the risks every time I do it. You know, as I said, I've been climbing for over 25 years and jumping for 10 years. And so, you know, obviously in that time, I have lost a lot of friends and I did lose my husband, Mario, four years ago on a jump that we were doing together. And honestly, I, I never saw that coming. Mario was a person that I truly never thought would get hurt or die in the mountains. And, um, you know, it was the worst loss I've ever had. So I wasn't sure if that was going to basically kill it for me, you know, if I was never going to enjoy the activity again. But, you know, after some time, I did start to really miss flying. And, you know, it's something that makes me feel close to Mario because he loved flying so much. He, he spent so much of his time in the air that just being in the air is in some ways this place that I, I kind of feel he's there. I think sometimes we have this perception of risk as all negative, and I don't think that's actually the case. Sometimes people don't take into account doing nothing is also a choice. And if we are willing to accept risk and to basically just learn how to take risks in a way that's, I would say, um, reasonable as opposed to a way that's reckless, then there's a lot for us to gain from that. And nowadays there's so many more women out there doing so many more things and it's a lot easier to see yourself doing those things. That's just how our brains work. And again, like I say, jumping is very emotional and I, I think that you know, that feeling you get when you don't know if you can do something and then you do it. Um, I think that's really fulfilling. That's why I'm still doing it. Three, two, one.
I'm Steph Davis, and I'm a woman of adventure. 